Well, my scripture today comes from the book of Proverbs chapter 14, verse number one. Again, that's the book of Proverbs chapter 14, verse number one. And it says this, Sister Sherry. It's a very famous portion of scripture that simply says, the wise woman builds her house. The wise woman builds her house. But with her own hands, the foolish one tears hers down. The wise woman builds her house, mm -hmm. but with her own hands, the foolish one tears it down. Mm -hmm. So immediately what the Bible is telling you is that a woman has the power to build or break her house. Right. It's funny because oftentimes when you read the Bible... You see scriptures like, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, you see scriptures like, a man is the head of the house. Mm -hmm. And so you get this, this uh, uh, male dominant leading the house spiritually mm -hmm. uh, uh, figure, right? right. Like, like, so you get from, uh, as for me and my house being quoted by men, we will serve the Lord. We are protectors of our home. We are the ones who ensure. But... Tuck in the middle of the Bible is a verse that says it's not just the job of the man right. to make sure the house is in order, yeah. but the woman has the same power to either build or break her house. Right. And I uh, want to talk to you today. If I were to give a title to my message, mm -hmm. it would be titled The Template of a Godly Woman. The template of a godly woman. What are templates? We live in an era nowadays where people are into doing it themselves. Right. You know, in the music world that I am very much involved in, when you go to record uh, on Pro Tools or Logic, and what Pro Tools or Logic is, those are softwares by which we use to record vocals and record music. Mm -hmm. Well, nowadays, so many people want to get into recordings and they want their sound to sound like such and such. Mm -hmm. How did you, how were you able to make the vocal sound like that? How were you able to make the drum sound like that? Mm -hmm. And what producers have begun to do is sell what is called templates. Mm -hmm. And so what it is, it is a, a, a laid out format that is already in place for you to follow the guides right. that they have already done. Mm -hmm. That's not only true in music, that is true for designers, people who like to design flyers or design artwork, mm -hmm. that you can go and buy <clears throat> pretty much a template right. of how to make a flyer and a template would pop up. Right. How to do a t-shirt, mm -hmm. they are t-shirt templates that are designed already and you just kind of fill in what's there. Yeah. And so what the template is, is just a format of how something should be done. Okay. And so when I say the template of a godly woman, what I'm speaking of is uh, the lifestyle that is laid out in scriptures by several women mm -hmm. that kind of is a template that if you followed it, followed their mistakes, mm -hmm. followed their triumphs, mm -hmm. followed their tragedies, mm -hmm and see what makes them special, if you follow those templates, then you too can end up with a life that brings glory to the honor of God. Amen. 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 And so, you know, in the Bible, the Bible has a lot of male figures, male characters. God did a lot of mighty things through male characters. Mm. Men like Moses, yeah. who were powerful, who yeah. led the children of Israel across the wilderness into the promised land who parted the Red Sea yeah. who God used to bring the plagues on Egypt mm. I mean just a tremendous man men all throughout scriptures you've heard of right and mm. if time were to permit there's a lot of men that are in the Bible but what most people don't know is that when God got ready to usher in something great mm. the majority of time it began with a woman mm. Moses story did not begin with Moses yeah. Moses' story began with a mother. Come on, yes, somebody. Yes, Come on. Yes. I need some amens and likes at the yes. bottom there already. <clears throat> uh, Moses' story did not begin with Moses. It began with a woman putting Moses in a basket. 
Yes. Had it not been for that woman's faith that mm. God is able to keep her yes. children, there would be no Moses. Mm. If that woman was depressed and gave up on God, we probably would have never heard of Moses. But because she trusted God, not only that, uh, there was a time when uh, the enemy wanted to wipe out all of the children of Israel. Mm. He wanted to kill the whole race. Not, And this wasn't the first time, incidentally, that yeah. happened during the time of Moses. Mm -hmm. That time reoccurred again because the enemy is out to destroy the seed yes. that is from God, yes. God's children. Yes. And so, so the enemy would love to do nothing more than to kill the children. But whenever it comes to children, ain't nothing like a mother's protection, mm -hmm. right? And so there was a time when they wanted to kill all the children of Israel and a woman stepped up by the name of Esther mm -hmm. and went into the king, hallelujah. Yes. And, the, and God used her to preserve a whole nation, the power of a woman. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a man that God used, but a woman that God mm -hmm. used in that scenario to preserve a nation. He used her beauty. He mm -hmm. used her charm. Right. He used everything about it. He used her brain. He used her spirituality. He used her connection to the, the, to the people of God. He used everything that is special about a woman mm -hmm. to cause her to preserve a generation. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you come down, I wrote a couple of women down here. There are women who are uh, 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 people like... Um, uh, that God always used to usher in. When God wanted to raise up prophets, when God wanted to, it was a woman by the name of Hannah that birthed Samuel that right. anointed David. Yeah, yeah. It, it, matter of fact, speaking of David, you don't get a David until you get a Ruth. Mm, right. Y'all ain't hear what I'm yes. saying. David's story didn't begin with David. It began with a Moabite woman yeah. leaving her world and saying, I'm going to chase after God. Yeah. Now his, she said to her mother-in-law, your God will be my God and your people will be my people. Yeah. And as a result, Ruth brought uh, David, right? When the children of Israel went to spy out the promised land, they weren't able to bring back such a good report had it not been for a woman. Mm. Uh, uh, and she was a, a woman mm -hmm. of the night, mm -hmm. if you don't know what I'm saying. Yes. God is able to use women of any circumstance to yep. bring his glory. Yes. Not only that, but the greatest treasure mankind has ever gotten. God could have brought him in any format he wanted yes. to. Yes. But you know how God chose to bring him? Through a woman. Who am yes. I talking about? Yes. I'm talking about Jesus. Yes. When God got ready to make his end, bring his son into the world, yes. when the son of God was getting ready to make his entrance into the world, God used a woman by the name of Mary. So whenever God got ready to do something tremendous, he used women. Amen, somebody. Amen, amen. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that try to down women, but the power and the love of a woman. Oh boy, there's nothing like it. I'm reminded of a time, uh, 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 my mother, mm. right? Uh, uh, she was, and let me show you, man. Her love knew no fear. Mm. Love is more powerful than fear. That's why the Bible says, "Perfect love will always cast out fear." Yeah. I remember one time when we were young, I was about seven, eight years old, when thieves broke into our house when we lived in Guyana, held us at gunpoint, and were firing shots at us. And I remember my mother grabbing hold of my little sister yeah. and trying to make a run for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, she wasn't scared of a, of a bullet or anything. Yeah. She was just doing her best to preserve and yes. protect yes. her children. And the love of a mother knows no boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, and I've seen that in you a lot, Sister mm -hmm. Sherry. I've seen how you go after protecting our children, protecting your family, mm -hmm. protecting the generation, mm -hmm. wanting not only to be a voice in your house, but a voice in the culture. Mm -hmm. And so today, I want to pull, uh, just give me a, a, a couple seconds to pull four mothers mm -hmm. out of the Bible nice. that I believe are great templates mm -hmm. that reminds us. They're not perfect. But there are things about them that we can pull from them mm -hmm. to show and see uh, how great these women are. The first one I already mentioned is Moses' mom. Yes. Moses' mother's, uh, her name is Jacobed mm -hmm. or Jacobed, mm -hmm. right? And I'm going to tell you what's special about her name in a minute. Moses' mother was the type of mother, it didn't matter what the culture was doing, she only was focused on what God was doing in her life. Mm -hmm. 
And so when Pharaoh wanted to kill all of the, the babies, she said, not my baby. You see, the world wants to kill all our babies. But thank God for mothers who will trust God. In spite of the culture telling you it's going to be hard to raise that child. Here's why you shouldn't have that child. Here's a million reasons why you should not have your child or not care for a child or not even desire a child. She said, not so. Mm. I'm going to do whatever I can to, to, to raise and keep my child and she trusted God and when she couldn't hide the baby any longer she put the baby and said okay I've done my best to keep this child yes. and when you've done your best as a mother mm -hmm. then you got to give the child over to God yes. to do the rest yes. and she put the baby in the basket allowed the baby to sail down and here's how good God is there was even a time when Pharaoh was using her mm -hmm. As a midwife. Yep. And, and uh, uh, Pharaoh said, I want you to kill every baby that is born. And what she did was she gave birth. To, she let the, 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 the children of Israel give birth to every baby. And when Pharaoh showed up and said, why aren't you killing the babies? This is what she said. She said, well, you know, the Hebrew women are different from Egyptian women. They, they, they have a due date, but they kind of come earlier. And so I can't anticipate when they're going to be born. So she, she, she lied to the Pharaoh. But it was it was a, it was a righteous lie, <laughs> and, and she did whatever to see when the culture is counter kingdom. You got to do what you got to do to honor God, yes. and that's what she did. And God honored her. Moses was taken out the basket, and when they needed a mother to take care of the mm -hmm. child. The, the Bible says they sent for Moses' mother and she was being paid now to raise Moses. And I know there are mothers that are watching. Wouldn't you love to get a check every month for raising your child? I know you would. And so Moses grew up and the Bible says this about Moses in the book of Hebrews. That Moses at some point of his life refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused to be identified with Egypt. If you know Bible, Egypt represents the culture, the world, the ways the world live. It's a place that God wants to redeem us out of. And Moses, because of his mother, something that he saw in this woman, he said, I refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Daughter, mm -hmm. Right. And here's the thing about it. Jochebed is the type of woman that gives us a template that that tells us the first introduction to God mm -hmm. is through you, mama. Mm -hmm. Someone said this, Sister Sherry, a godly mother is worth more than 50 pastors. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that statement. I said, that is so powerful. Because before your children reaches a pastor or reaches a spiritual leader, the first example of who God is, the first example of faith, the first example of trusting yes. God comes from you, mama. There's a statement that says the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. If you teach them bitterness then they'll grow up bitter. Right. If you teach them anger, they'll grow up anger. Right. If you teach them that God is, is not somebody you ought to trust and your perspective of God is that you hate God because mm -hmm. of circumstances, mm -hmm. that's what they will see. But if instead they saw a praying mother, yes. they saw a mother who said, I don't wor I'm not worried about the culture. Yes. God will protect my children. Yes. God will protect my family. Mm -hmm. God will protect us in the middle of the trial that we're going through. Mm -hmm. If that's what they see when they grow up, that's what they'll imitate. Yes. And here's the thing about Jacobed that is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Her name means the glory of God or God's glory. If I were to get deeper, more specifically, it means Yahweh's glory. Mm. Inside of her name is the word Yah, Yahweh. Mm. Now, why that is interesting is because that word was never revealed to the children of Israel. It was revealed on, uh, to one man. And it wasn't revealed until this one man asked the question, mm. the word Yah. Yahweh was revealed to Moses. Yeah. Yes. But how could his mother have inside of her name mm. a name that was given to her that wasn't really revealed until he was a grown man? Right. Do you see right. there? Right. In other words, she should not have had that name. Right. 
because that name was not revealed until Moses went on the mountain, had an encounter with God, and he said to uh, God, who are you? What is your name? Tell me who you are so that I may tell the children of Israel, uh, uh, this is the name of the God. And that's when God says, I am that I am. That translates as Yahweh, right? But in his mama's name is the word Jacobed. Some people say, well, how do you know that's her name? It's found in the book of Numbers. Mm. The book of Numbers tells, uh, in the Numbers 26, verse 59, it tells her name is Jacobed. Mm. It leads me to so many questions. Right. Was that a name given by her parents? Mm. <laughs> or was that a name given to her by her son? Mm. Did, did her mama, you know, your mama, his mama call him that, so I'm gonna call him that, right? <laughs> was it was it Jacobed given to her by her parents, mm. or did Moses look back and said, "The glory of Yahweh is seen in my mother, yes. and I refuse to be counted yes. as a child that is Pharaoh's, uh, yes. the son of Pharaoh's daughter." Right now, 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 here's what I'm saying to you: When your children grow up. Can they look back and see the glory of God in you, mama? Mm. Can they see a woman who trusted and feared God? Mm. And I believe, if I were to speculate, that name could not have come just by accident. Yes. I believe Moses probably saw his mother as the glory of God shining in her. Mm. And so that's my first lady uh, that I want to use as a template. Mm. That you women of God are the first example of what children will see. Yes. The second is a woman who is not often mentioned. Mm. Her name is Zipporah. Can you mm. say that with me, Sister Zipporah. Sherry? And do you know who that is? Mm. Zipporah was the African wife of Moses. Right? Mm. Uh, so I'm talking a lot about Moses today. Moses, when he left Egypt, found himself with the Midians and he married uh, Jethro's daughter. Mm. And her name was Zipporah. Mm. I mean, Moses gets a lot of credit, doesn't he, Sister Sherry? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we love Moses, we don't do. we? Mm -hmm. Did you know that in the middle of the book of Exodus... Chapter 4, there's a verse in there that is not often preached about that says, and you probably don't know this and many of my viewers don't, that God was going to kill Moses. Mm. This is not after he led the children. This is not when he struck the rock. This is not when he was getting ready to die. This is not, this is in the middle of him uh, going to lead the children of Israel in the book of Exodus chapter 4. In the middle of it, it says God was getting ready to kill Moses. And this is what it says. But Zipporah mm. cut the foreskin of her, of her uh, child mm. and threw it at Moses' feet and said, You are my bridegroom of blood. Mm. And as a result of what she did, God didn't kill Moses. Yeah. Had it not been for a woman... Moses would have died. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to unpack that a little bit. I know you're blown away yeah. right now. I know you're about to, I know yes. you, you, this is going to be your study for the week. So here's, I, you know, we read that many times and many times as a child reading that, I said, God, why would you go kill this man? Mm -hmm. Well, apparently, uh, however God was going to kill him, it was apparent to his wife. Mm -hmm. Some theologians believe that the way God was going to kill him was with a sickness. Mm -hmm. Right? Or, or, or maybe uh, somehow it was revealed to Zipporah right. because for some reason she knew what to do. Right. Or maybe it wasn't physical uh, a sickness. Maybe it was the fact that he was in a disobedience mm. and she knew it. Mm. She knew the type of God that we serve right. that is, is more into obedience than sacrifice. She said, I got to do something. So here's what the problem was. Moses was getting ready to lead the children of Israel. Mm. The children of Israel are covenant children. Right. 
our children who are, and the covenant is sealed with God by blood. And God gave Abraham a commandment that whenever you have a child, mm. that the child must be circumcised. Mm. Here's Moses getting ready to identify with the Hebrew children, getting ready to preach to Pharaoh, getting ready to be this figure who was going to be dominant. But the thing that would identify him and his family as children of God, he failed to do it. Come on, somebody. Right. He, and there are many men who are supposed to lead their family, mm. but instead they are great examples to the world. Right. But privately, yes. come on, yes. somebody, yes. privately their life is nowhere near publicly. Right. And Zipporah saw that in this man mm. and saw that God was getting, because God don't deal with frauds. Right. Let me tell y'all that yep, plain. Yep. You can work for, for church, but God fired you from kingdom. Yes. You can be great in the eyes of the public, yes. but it don't mean you got heaven's approval. Yes. And so Moses did not circumcise this child, and God was getting ready to get him. And the woman stepped up and said, you are supposed to be the leader of this yes. house, but because you ain't doing what you're supposed to, yes. I'm going to. In yes. other words, she stepped in and says, ask for me in my house. Right. And she she wasn't a Hebrew right, by birth. Right. She was from the Midianites. Yeah. She wasn't of the tribes. Mm -hmm. And so she said, as for me and my house, mm -hmm. we will serve the Lord. And she did what her husband wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And then she said, she made a strange statement mm -hmm. that I'm still trying to unpack. She said, you are my bridegroom of blood. She was already married. She should have said, you're my husband of blood but bridegroom of blood, covenant. It speaks of covenant. You're my bride. Right. I, could, I could go off, but for time's sake, that's another sermon. Mm -hmm. But here's my point. Sometimes as a woman, when the men fail to do what they're supposed to, you got to step in and step up. Yes. There's a lot of single women watching here mm -hmm. who men have used you, yes. who came into your life, promised you the world, mm -hmm. and once they got what they wanted, they mm -hmm. listen, women go through abuse. Yes. Let me tell you something. Women go through a lot in our society. Right. Women, men use women. Men get what they want from women. Mm -hmm. men, men abandon women and leave them to take care of children. Men make promises they cannot keep. Right. But not only that, sometimes, like my mother, mm -hmm. my mother became a widow. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might have a good man in your life, but unfortunately that man passes away. Mm -hmm. It happens. It happened to me as a child. I lost my father. Well, women, what do you do when the men wouldn't take a stand? You preserve your family. Yes. Ask for you and your house. Yes. You will serve the Lord. Yes. And sometimes, sometimes you might have the man present, but is not present. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the man might be there, but not there. Right. He knows what he ought to do, but isn't doing it. Sometimes you as a woman, as a wife, can step up and step in mm -hmm. and cause the change of your family. From that verse on, Moses became Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses, I'm telling you, he, yeah. when you got a wife who will serve the Lord with you, you serve God different. Yes. Women, you have the power to do that. Mm -hmm. A wise woman. Bills or tears. I could imagine Zipporah said, look at you. You fake, you fraud. You, 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 you don't even believe in the God that you say, why should I roll with? I'm going back to my dad. You're no good. You're no, you're, you're no having. You're nothing. No, no, no. She, no, she said, if you ain't going to do it, I'm going to do it. She didn't leave him. She stuck with him. She just did what he's supposed to and said, we got to get this thing back on track, Moses. Same thing with, you know, with a mother. A mother don't talk down to her children. Same yeah. thing with Jacobed. She didn't talk down to Moses. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, wives, you can build your husband or you can break your husband. There were times when Sherry broke me. <laughs> you remember the young days of marriage? You had some wonderful words. Oh, if you can always be in bills, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sherry started pulling all types of cards. She said, I, you know, technically you should be having money. And the money ain't flowing in your life, you might have a curse. <laughs> and uh, you didn't say those words, but it felt like you were saying that. But now you learned, you know, uh, as we grew together yeah. and you became uh, more connected to God, your words are like honey to my, 
ears now. You know, you always, when I'm down, you can see it from the, across the way and you can come and say, babe, we can make it. We can do this. We can, let's pray. Let's, we got to trust God. Sometimes you'll come and you'll bring a scripture. Sometimes you'll, you'll tell me what you've been reading. Some days I'm so upset and you would talk me back into wanting to get back up and go on the journey that God has called me to. So my family's not held together because I'm a great man. I am a good man, but I got a great woman and that is a template. Zipporah. Go check it out, Sherry. I got two more, two more, and I'm done. Here's another one. For many women, Mother's Day is a sad day. Yeah. Well, for those who've lost a mother, it's a sad day. For, 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 for men, too, yeah. who's lost mothers. Yeah. And Mother's Day uh, uh, can be a grieving day, right? But that's not the only reason why people grieve on Mother's Day. Some people are sad because, like the next mother I'm about to bring up, her name is Hannah. Mm. They are old enough to have a child. Right. They're in marriages. Mm. And they're saying, like Hannah, God, I want a child and I cannot have one. Right. And for many reasons, um, Hannah, Hannah's, uh, was, Hannah's husband had two wives. Yeah. Some theologians speculate that the reason was in, in, in some of those cultures, when you were married, if your wife couldn't have a baby, mm -hmm. you were allowed to marry someone else. And the Bible says that his other wife, mm -hmm. she had all the children in the world. Yeah. And every time she popped one out, she'd look at Hannah and say, ha ha, you can't. Mm -hmm. And I know you probably don't have somebody in your life doing that, but every time Mother's Day come around, this is a day you would rather not right. be part of. Right. You call your mother real quick, wish her happy Mother's Day, but you don't want to say nothing because to you, the same thing that Hannah was feeling, mm -hmm. she felt. And Hannah prayed and Hannah believed God. Listen, childbearing, you said something earlier that is very interesting. Mm -hmm. I want you to know, like men, mm -hmm. you can be a mom by biology, mm -hmm. but not a mother. Mm -hmm. I have seen mothers by biology, who you, nah, nah, mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to come again. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people who weren't mothers by biology be yeah. the best mother yeah. that you can ever be. Yeah. Child raising, right, is, is something that you said earlier, that it, it is a call from God and a gift. Why does God allow some people to have children? Mm -hmm. You know, there's... Any teenagers out here who aren't even ready to have a baby, yeah. getting caught up in having babies. And there are people who are in marriages who are ready for babies and for some reason yeah. they can't. I can't answer the sovereignty of God. Yeah. But I do know that that woman prayed and God opened her womb. Yeah. God saw her pain. Here's what I want to focus in on. I'm not here to tell you I know what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'll believe God with you yeah. that the Lord would open your womb. Yes. I'll believe for Jesus. a miracle yes. because he's a miracle working yes. God. But here's the point of what I want to focus in on. Hannah remembered her Lord mm. and her Lord remembered her. Mm. God sees the trials and the trauma of what that does to you. Yeah. And he is able to make provision to bring you through that yes. so that you don't have to feel that way every time. Yes, yes. God is able to bring children, whether biological mm -hmm. or whether adoption or whether children by your profession. Right. Sometimes you see God just allows these same right. people to be in a profession. Yeah. You know, some of the best Sunday school teachers I've ever known were great mothers, yes. only that when I grew up, I found out they yeah. never had their own children. Yeah. But they were so motherly. Yeah. Being a, you can be a mother. And God sees your pain. Yeah. And here's the thing about this mother. To the mothers who do have children. Mm. That Hannah did. Mm. You see, Hannah is a very interesting character. Because she prayed so hard for a child. Yeah. That when she got the child, Hannah never raised the child. I would think if I'm struggling right. to have a child, when I get that child, every Instagram photo going to be for the rest right. of their life on that child right. because I've, I wasn't able to do this. You see, Hannah 
problem was not so much that she wanted the child mm -hmm. was that she wanted to be able to accomplish naturally yes. what she felt she could have. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Reproduction of children doesn't mean you have done God's will. Right. Right. Hannah's job wasn't completed until she trusted God by giving Samuel over to Eli yes. to be raised in the yes. church. God gave her that child so that that child could become Samuel yes. the prophet yes. raised in the temple yes. and raised to be a prophet. Yes. And she never really, she had to visit her own son. Yeah. So she never had the joy of child rearing or the burden of child rearing too. She just wanted to accomplish something. In whatever state you're in, there is a will why God has allowed you to be there. And he hasn't forgotten you. Take a book out of Hannah's page. Take a page out of Hannah's book. Take a book out of Hannah's page. Take a page out of Hannah's book and cry out to God. And God will remove the pain that yes. sometimes we feel during this time. Yes. God is in charge. Yes. As I told you, when God allows things, God don't turn around yes. and say, yes. oops, how do I rectify right. this? God has made a way yes. out of no way. Yes. And for the mothers who have children, take a page out of Hannah's book. Give your child back up to the service of God. Yes. Raise your, if you raise your child and you ask them this question, what do you want to be when you grow up? It's a great question. But if you've never asked them this other question that I'm about to tell you, then you really need to think about asking them this. Child, what do you think the will of God is for your life? Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between the two questions. Yeah. What I want to be and what God's will is are mm -hmm. two different things. Yeah. What I want to be can be influenced by culture. Right. What God's will is is exactly what I was created for. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Last one and I'm done. Amen. Amen. Y'all still hanging with me out there? Yes. Here's the last uh, mother that I want to pull. She is found in the book of Matthew. And, and incidentally, uh, uh, Moses' mother's story is found in the book of Exodus mm -hmm. in the beginning uh, when Moses, uh, chapter 2. Uh, Zipporah's story is found in uh, Exodus chapter 4. Uh, Hannah's story is found in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the next person's story is found in the book of Matthew chapter 15. Uh, 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 in there, it talks about what we know as the Canaanite woman. And this woman is the last woman I want to talk about. This woman shows the love of a mother. Mm -hmm. The love of a mother to chase after God when her family's in trouble. Mm -hmm. The Canaanite woman, her identity, her nationality did not allow her to have access to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But her daughter was sick. And when she went to Jesus, she said, son of David... Mm -hmm. Son of David, she identified him, number one, as the Messiah. Mm. Here's an unqualified woman coming to God mm. and realizing who he is in authority. Right. Right. It reminds me of the scripture that says, he who comes to God must believe that he is. Yes. I'm thankful to, all of, for, to God for all the women when they yes. approach God. Yes. They know who their God yes. is. Ain't nothing like a praying yes. woman. Ain't nothing like a woman when it's time to war. Yes. I tell you, men's prayers are powerful and men ought to always pray. And that's a general statement when it says men there yes. for humanity. Yes. But ain't nothing like a praying mother. Yes. Let me tell you, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Some of you are alive today, not because you're smart or good. Some of you are successful today, not because of how amazing you are, how talented. The only reason you are where you are is beca because there was a praying woman yes. who knew how to pray, who knew how to not give up, yes. who, who didn't care what the circumstance looked like. I'm going to pray. Yes. No matter if the circumstance went left wing, Keeps yes. on praying, keeps on praying for their children, yes. keeps on praying for their home, keeps on praying that the will yes. of God would be done in their family, in their yes. family lineage. And this was a woman who approached Jesus properly yes. because you don't approach our Savior anyhow yes. because he owes no man nothing, yes. no explanation. He has to do nothing for nobody. Yes. If God has ever done anything for you, it's yes. not because you're special, it's because he's good. Yes. And it's not because you were good, it's not because you were deserving. Yes. There's nothing you will ever 
do to become deserving. If God has been good to you, it's because his nature is good. If he is not good, nothing will ever be done for you. So, so glory to God. This woman approached God knowing that he is the Messiah, the one sent. And when you approach God, approach his throne knowing who he is. But then she began to unravel that she has an issue. Her daughter is sick unto death and, 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 and possessed and is going on, has all these issues, the Bible says, possessed with a devil. And, 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 and so she, she goes to Jesus and she says, I need a healing for my daughter. But she says this, right? She says in the book of Matthew, she says, son of David, have mercy on me. Very interesting. Why didn't she say have mercy on my daughter because this was the type of mother that once her family has a problem she never said that's the children's right. problem or that's my right. husband's problem right. she saw if the family had a problem yeah. it is right. my yes. problem yes. and if anything is broken in the family it's not the family's broken I'm broken. Right. That's the type of mother we see in her character here. And so she went to Jesus and she said to him, have mercy on me. I am so grateful for every mother who sees that children's problem is theirs, yes. who, who bears. You see, that's yes. a good mother. Yes. A good mother carries her children's problem. Yes. A good mother carries. And I see that so much in you, Sister Sherry. Mm. I see that so in so many godly mother that she prayed, have mercy. And when the Savior heard her, he said, it's not right for me to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. Mm. She said, Jesus gave a harsh answer. But this is a mother who just wouldn't quit. Yep. This was a mother who yep. said, oh, you're right. Canaanites, we're not the same as the Israelites. Yep. And you are Jewish. Yep. And you, you reserve the right to give healing to your people. Yes. My people serve false gods. Yes. They've never honored you. Yes. They've never done anything to glorify you. I know I come from a lineage that has never respected you. Mm -hmm. And you're right. Here are the people, hallelujah, yes. that I, I want to yes. pull that scripture. It's going and so is my ears. To not slow down the momentum, <laughs> hallelujah. We're going to edit all that back for YouTube, yeah. amen. This is what she said. She said, it's not right for me to take the, 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 the uh, Jesus said, it's not right for me to take what belongs to the children and give it to the dogs. Right. And she wouldn't quit. This is what the Bible says she did. Hallelujah. You don't got to look for oh. it. You don't got to look for it, Sister Jerry. It's fine. This is what she did. Jesus simply she said, but even the dogs that hang around the table every now and then gets a crumb. Yep. I don't understand that. I would have quit. Right. Once Jesus told me, you don't really fit the criteria, right. I would have said, well, all right then, there's no hope. Mm. But you see, a godly mother, yeah. there's no quit in her. Mm. And she persevered and yes. she said to him, even the dogs that hang around the table gets a slice yes. every now and then. Yes. And you know what that did to Jesus? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I have never seen such great faith. Now watch the contrast. Mm -hmm. Watch the contrast. Before he said, what I'm able to do belongs to this house right. because of their nationality. Right. But God is not impressed with your nationality. That's right. The contrast was he said, technically, lady, they should get it mm -hmm. because of their nationality and not you. But she said, I got something that nationality don't have. Mm, yes. And this is what Jesus said that she had. Yeah. He said, I have never seen such faith in this woman in all of the people whose nationality should have had that faith. Yep. You, you see yep. what I'm saying? Yep. And so, so what, 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 what was happening there was this woman showed what made her a great mother. Yep. Her ability to believe in the God that we serve, that he's able. And the Bible says immediately when she said those words, yep. the problem was lifted yes. straight off of her family. Yep. Let me tell you, as a mother, your ability to storm heaven, your ability to believe God is what's going to preserve your family's lineage. Yes. What are you saying, Pastor Rich? That I can be a mother without trials? No, you will be a mother with trials. Mm -hmm. 
But because of the type of mother you are, mm. you will weather every storm. Amen. Four women, yes. Jacobed, yes. who showed her son the glory of God. Yes. Zipporah, mm. the woman who stepped in when her husband wasn't doing what he was supposed to. Yeah. Hannah, the woman who desired so bad to be a mother mm. and felt like she was forgotten, but God remembered. Yes. And lastly, the Canaanite woman, the woman who just wouldn't quit, yes. that when her family had a problem, she went to the Lord, her God. Mm. If you're watching today, I want you to know these are templates yes. that we can follow. Yes. And you can be the woman God has made you to be in spite of what has happened in your life. Right. If you were to trust them like these women did, mm. all of these women have one thing in common. They trusted God. Yes. They trusted his word. Yes. And as a result, they changed the course of their whole family's yes. lineage. You can do the same by putting your trust in God. Yes. Let's pray today. If you're watching today and you've never asked Christ Jesus into your heart, you want to do so. You want to ask Christ to come into your life right now. You want to ask the Lord Jesus to be your savior. And he will storm into your life like never before. I'm going to pray, Sister Sherry will repeat after me, and you repeat with me. And in a minute, we're going to pray. We're going to take prayer requests, and we're going to pray for all the mothers. Amen. But first, let's make the most important decision you will ever make. Mm -hmm. Ask Christ to come into your heart. Let's pray. Say, Father God. Father God, I thank you, I thank you for, being my God, for being my God, for being my King, for, being my king, for, sending, your son, for sending your Son, Jesus, Jesus to, die to die for my sins. For my sins. Today, Today, I accept him, I accept him as, Lord as Lord and Savior. And Savior. Forgive, me Forgive me of every sin. Of every sin. I, thank you I thank you that your death, that your death was, for me was for me to have life. To have life. I, thank I thank you that you rose from the dead. That you rose from the dead. That I may have life, that I may have life abundantly, abundantly in this life, in this life and, the one to come. and the one to come. I give you praise. I give you praise. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Let, your Spirit. Word Let your word take root in my heart. Take root in, my heart. in, Jesus, in name. Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching once again. We pray blessings on you and your family. And we're doing a tremendous work here in New York City. We believe the Lord has called us here. It cost us. We are grateful for everyone that sows into our ministry. And if you're watching and you feel led to sow, you can go to churchcityusa.com. You can sow into our ministry. Hey, listen, every bit help. It doesn't matter how big or small. We bless God for you and uh, we love you. And we want to continue to do the work of the ministry. Thank you. This is your boy and I'm out.